question. No, I have not seen Hamilton on Broadway. Uh, however, I have read the book on uh, which the uh, play was based. So we are in the room where it happens. Let's see where that takes us. Let's begin this narrative with the islands of St. Kitts and, Saint Kitts and Nevis, uh, located not too far away from Puerto Rico. Uh, these are some Google Maps to show what the islands look like. Now, the name Nevis comes from this Spanish phrase. Um, and uh, Professor Sabrina Chase, you happen to be a native speaker of Spanish, so would you please uh, do us the courtesy of reading this uh, Spanish phrase here? Nuestra Señora de las Nieves. Uh, would you please repeat that last word, snows? Nieves. Nieves. Um, am I, do I have, am I pronouncing that right? Nieves? Okay, good. Um, and so the name of the uh, island was derived from that. Now, uh, obviously, there are two syllables in that uh, word. And the people of the island took the first syllable and now call their island Nevis. However, uh, when James Hamilton, about whom we're going to learn later, named the estate, he named it Nevis after the birthplace of his father. Why the difference in pronunciation? Well, there could be a number of different factors. Perhaps the natives of the island uh, hadn't uh, decided on what the, uh, the exact pronunciation at the time uh, Alexander Hamilton left. Perhaps it's because Alexander Hamilton was of Scottish descent, which is the reason why on the web page I was wearing the kilt, by the way. Um, and so uh, thought of Ben Nevis, which is the tallest mountain in Scotland, and therefore the tallest mountain in Britain. Um, but whatever, uh, the uh, name of the island is Nevis, but this is the Nevis estate. I will also mention, just as a bit of uh, history, that unfortunately at the time of Alexander Alexander Hamilton's birth, Nevis Island was a center of the Caribbean slave trade. Um, and as bad as the conditions were for the slaves in the American South, in the Caribbean islands they were far, far worse. Alexander Hamilton was a staunch abolitionist throughout his entire life, and his experiences at Nevis are probably the reason why. Um, there is some controversy about the exact date, but for the purposes of this talk, I'm going to pick 1755, the year that Alexander Hamilton was born on Nevis Island. As you can see from the picture, like many historical figures, Alexander Hamilton was born halfway up a tree. Um, uh, this picture, which I found on Wikipedia, purports to be a picture of Alexander Hamilton uh, in his teenage years. I strongly doubt that he had the opportunity to sit for a portrait back then. He lived a serious rags to riches story. His mother, Rachel Fawcett, was married, but not to his father, James Hamilton. Uh, James Hamilton uh, abandoned the family to try to seek his fortune elsewhere in the Caribbean. They were very poor, and uh, he felt that they would be better off without him. Alexander Hamilton's mother uh, died when he and his brother James were teenagers. Uh, I mentioned James twice. I should mention that when you talk about the Hamilton family, the names Alexander and James occur very often in alternating generations. I will do my best to try to keep things clear for you as I go through those uh, family names. But through a series of circumstances and a lot of hard work and a clever essay that he wrote, the people of the island of Nevis took up a collection for him in order for him to be educated in the United States. Um, he arrived first in New Jersey and did some prep school work here, and then he entered King's College, the precursor to Columbia University. Alexander Hamilton never graduated from Columbia. The Revolutionary War intervened, but there is no alumni uh, committee in the world that would let that stop them. Uh, we consider him one of ours. <laughs> And in fact, there is a hall named after him, Hamilton Hall, on Columbia campus, and there is a statue of Alexander Hamilton in front of that hall. One wonders what we would have done if he had graduated. <laughs> Just to be a little bit fair here, it would have been impossible for anybody to graduate at that time because during the British occupation of New York, uh, the British Army took over the King's College building to use as a hospital. I don't know what the other uh, fellow uh, classmates of Hamilton did. Hamilton himself became a captain uh, of a company of the artillery and fought in one of the early battles of the Revolutionary War, the Battle of White Plains, which George Washington lost. Um, I should also so truth in advertising say that this picture purports to be that of Alexander Hamilton at the Battle of Yorktown, which was one of the last battles of the Revolutionary War. 
Um, the interesting thing about, about the Battle of White Plains and how it intersects in this story is that after the battle, the British troops, the victorious British troops, settled in this part of Westchester between Terry Town, you notice the different spelling here if you can make it out, T-E-R-R-Y Town, and and uh, Dobbs Ferry in this area over here, uh, including the farm holdings of one farmer named Jonathan Odell. Now, probably people who are involved with historical societies in this area know, the, know about much more about Jonathan Odell than I do. He's sort of a local area revolutionary war hero. But for the point of this story, the point is, is that he owned a farm, the British camped there and really terrorized his family. For some reason, they became convinced uh, that they knew something about the, dis the distribution of the rebel forces. From from their encampment on Odell's farm, they spread out through all of Westchester, laying waste to the county. And again, to be fair, the American, I'm sorry, I should say the rebel forces, given the time frame that we are talking about, did exactly the same thing. It took about 50 years for Westchester to recover from that. Since I've mentioned the farm holdings of Jonathan Odell, I should mention that at the time, uh, this part of Westchester was located.